Today I'm coming to you browless so I can talk to you about how I do my brows. It is one of the most requested tutorials, videos, explanations, what product you're using, what brush you're using, how do you do that? And I'm here to tell you all of my brow secrets that aren't really that secret because I've, I've talked about them before, but now they're in video format, so. I hope you guys enjoy it. Before I really get into what I use, why I use it, why I prefer it, blah, 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 I'm going to give you a backstory on my brows. I was the first in my classroom in middle school to have tweezed brows, and I was so excited about it because I wasn't very feminine growing up. I was kind of a tomboy, didn't really wear much or do much for myself or to myself. So when my mom let me tweeze my brows for the first time, I was really excited. And I didn't have super full or bushy brows. I just gave them a little bit of shape with my mom's help. And then they progressively got thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner in the 90s until it was just a tiny little pencil brow, borderline sperm brow with a little bit in the front. And I saw the light and started letting my brows grow out again. And now with my knowledge of makeup and products that can help me get my bushy brow goals, I have started to kind of experiment a little bit more. If you guys remember maybe a couple years ago, I don't know, three or four years ago, I was doing a lot of the colored brow with lots of product on there and my style has evolved and changed. And now it's more of a very detailed brow with strokes that are fine and visible in the brow when I do go through with a brow look. Sometimes I just leave the brows as they are now with no product in there and just brush them up. And this has changed with social media trends on Instagram mainly, but then also with my knowledge as a working artist and working with other artists, seeing how they're doing brows, working on different people's faces. Not every face can take a heavy brow. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I like to do my brows now, which is a mix of different things and different influences. Ever since I started tweezing my brows, I do that every day. So I don't really get crazy hairs here and there. They do grow in below what my current shape is, but I tweeze them every day. I just, I'm, I'm accustomed to it now. It doesn't really hurt anymore and it's only a couple hairs versus sitting there for three hours because I haven't tweezed in a month. I don't put any products in my brows overnight. I've heard good things about castor oil, but haven't tried it yet. And I'm afraid to use something like Latisse or anything like that because I've heard that if you stop using it, your brows kind of fall out and that's scary to me. So no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna let my brows just live and groom them, tweeze them, trim them if they get a little crazy and that's about it. That being said, everybody's brows are different. So your brows may be more sparse, more full. They may be wiry and thick, thin brows and no brows. So. I'm going to talk about what works for me on my person, but then also what I've used for other people's brows and what I've actually liked a lot. My must have number one for brows is the Smith 214 brush. This guy right here, he's nice and long. You can bend him and play around with him. You can brush any type of brow, whether it's bushy or thin or sparse, male or female talent, anybody's brows, even a little bit of men's grooming here in the uh, facial hair, and I've heard hairstylists that like it too for baby hairs and whatnot. This is a really good spoolie to have on hand at all times for touch-ups, for brushing your brow, and I think it is the longest spoolie that I've seen, and it's perfect for just quickly combing up a brow into place. As far as brow brushes, these are gonna be my favorites, but you're gonna find out whatever works for you. Some people like a more dense brush, a shorter brush, a thicker brush, whatever it is, but these are my two favorites. So this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills 7B brush. Very, very, very sharp, as you can see there. And this is the Smith 203 brush and it is tiny, look at that little guy right there. These two are the ones that I flip and flop in between for getting those individual brow strokes and brow hairs painted 
on the brow. So these are great for those of you that have very sparse brows or no brows at all to get a dimension in your brow versus just a stenciled on solid block of color. Next is the product that you're actually going to fill your brow with and that you're going to use to give your brow color. First in that category is a brow powder. So you can use something like this this is the Anastasia Brow Duo powder that I've depotted. This powder I really like because it is a very dry powder. It's not loose, so you're not going to get fallout or anything crazy like that on your brow, which is very different than what you would possibly want in payoff from an eyeshadow. This product you can slowly build up into the brow, and it's going to be very, very precise on a detail brush like the ones I just showed you, because the brush isn't going to pick up a lot of product since the powder's so tight and so dry. Next would be a pomade type of product. So I have this guy here from Anastasia. This one I've dipped into many a time. When your pomade starts to dry out, because it inevitably will, don't add product to your pomade. Don't add your oils, don't add visine, don't add anything like that. Just take a spatula like this guy right here and dip it into the pomade and mix it around. You will see that the pomade actually has a lot of moisture still in the product. It's just a caked up dry layer on top. So if you mix it up, you're going to get a lot more spreadability from your product without having to alter its chemical composition. Next we have brow gels. And from what I know, there's three types of brow gels. First we have your typical clear brow gel. This is from Anastasia, this guy just looks like that. Clear brow gel. Next we have tinted brow gels. So this guy is from Benefit. This is 3D brow tone. So this one has a little bit of shimmer, but it's a gel with a tint. That's what it is. The colors can vary, but it's a brow gel with a tint only. And then we have brow gels that have fibers in them. These can come tinted and untinted. But this guy right here is from Grande. And I don't know if you can see that there, but there's some clumpiness to that. That is actually the fibers and the tint in the brow gel. The fibers are going to help add volume to a sparse brow as well. There are also pencils, ones that you can sharpen, the traditional ones, and then ones that you can twist up. This guy is from Senna. You can see that on one end it's the pencil, on the other it's a spoolie. And this guy is an example from MAC, same type of format. And lastly, we have brow pens. So I have two here. This guy is from MAC. It also has a powder on the end, which I don't really use. This is what the pen looks like. And this guy is from Makeup Forever. It has a lot more pigment there on the brush, as you can see. All of these products have their place depending on the brow that you're working on and then also the finished look that you want for that brow. What I do on a daily basis is I go through powders first to fill in and define and I set with a gel. Those are the only two things that I really work with. Sometimes I'll go into a pomade if I want a more precise brow and if I want a really graphic brow then I'll pick up the pens. So for my brow today I'm just going to comb it up. Combing up the brow is going to allow me to see exactly where I want to fill in the brow. Then I'm going to take this guy. This is the Makeup Forever 172 brush and I like him because he is a little bit more flexible and soft and white. He's a little on the chubby side. So I like to fill in my entire brow with some brow powder to get the shape that I'm looking for without really defining it too much. So if I wanted a soft brow, I could just go in with that type of fill and be on my way. Now, a tip for those of you that might have straight brows and want more of an arched look, it isn't always about adding product to the top of the brow. Sometimes it's about lowering the front of the brow to make it seem that your arch is higher. So if I were to just push the skin down here at the front of my brow, you can see how much more arched that looks versus lifting my brow and having it straight across. So that gives me either a surprised or a sad kind of look, whereas the lower front of the brow gives a more intense look. Another thing that you might wanna keep in mind depending on what you're going for is that the top and the bottom of the brow should run parallel to each other. 
I have seen a lot of brows that come straight from under here are, and are kind of like a, a straight brow from the bottom and on the top it gets angular so it ends up looking like a reverse sperm brow instead of having a big chunk of brow at the front and then a little tail it's almost like a small beginning to the brow small front of the brow and then it gets really fat at the end where that tail is keeping those two lines running parallel to each other and coming to an apex or the arch at the same time and then gradually coming down or outward depending on the style of your brow I feel is a little bit more visually appealing and also mimics the shape of a naturally healthy bushy brow a little bit more when I'm at the point that I want to start filling in my brow which would be now because I've just gone over one step it's just been a lot of talking I'm going to take my brush and my brow powder and I'm going to just dip my brush into that brow powder so I'm just going to place that product there and flick up when the product is done when I've used the product that's on the brush I'm going to dip back into my powder and I'm going to repeat that movement now I can flip and flop in between shades if I wanted to give my brows more depth and more realism for these fake hairs that I'm drawing on and you'll see here at the front my hairs grow up then they start falling to the side and then they go down here at the arch my hairs don't fly up naturally they kind of fall down to the side so that's how i'm going to draw in those brush strokes repeating on the other side with these brow duo powders you have the advantage that there are two shades in every compact so that you can add a lighter shade maybe toward the front of the brow if you want to soften the front of the brow and then gradually use the darker shade toward the end or the tail of the brow now that my brows are both filled in with powder and they're pretty even as far as shape and everything i'm not going to obsess too much over them as far as being perfect because what part of your body is perfectly symmetrical anyways now is when i usually go in and clean up my brows so this is the brush that i've been liking a lot this is the anastasia a27 i use it clean i used to put a lot of concealer around my brow but i don't do that anymore i just use a clean brush similar to this which is like a concealer brush and i just go back and forth cleaning up that shape if there is a lot of product or brow color that I need to correct then I might go in with a little bit of bioderma or the tiniest bit of concealer but I don't really conceal around my brows anymore because my makeup isn't as heavy as it used to be and I feel like it would just make my brows stand out and be the center focus which obviously with that this I look that they they can't compete and then lastly I'm going to gel my brows so I have been using this a lot this is the benefit 3d brow tone and I like to comb up the brow but then also kind of work product into the brow so that it's not just the top layer that's getting that coat of gel it's the bottom layers as well and I like to brush them up and then kind of flatten the top of that brow there so it still looks brushed up and textured but not completely feral when working on models some of them have amazing brows that are just perfect when they're brushed up and I might just leave them like that depending on the quality of the brow so if the brow is already very dense and the hairs are nicely trimmed and then I might just run a gel through the brow and that's it call it a day and then if I get any brow gel around there that isn't supposed to be there I'll just clean it up easy peasy and that is it guys usually that's how I go through my brows on a daily basis just for you know whatever makeup I take about maybe four to five minutes five minutes if I'm being very perfectionist but usually it's about four minutes to just draw on the individual hairs comb through it and do what i need to do and clean it up as far as microblading i have seen very good microblading and bad microblading and my opinion on that would be i wouldn't really want to commit to something so permanent on my brows since brows change all the time trends change all the time and i like to flop in between doing 
colored brows, light brows, more blonde brows, darker brows. So being committed to something like microblading is going to be a little bit difficult for me to just jump that hurdle. But if you have a specific brow that you like that you've been doing for the last five, 10 years and it suits your face, then I would say go for it. Just do your homework as far as your type of brow, the type of brow you're trying to achieve and make sure that your artist knows how to work with that. If you have a very sparse brow, check people's workout to make sure that they've worked on people with sparse brows before so that you know what to expect. If you have previously tattooed brows, make sure that your artist also knows how to work with or around that so that you can get the desired effect and the desired look that you want without having to go through the process of getting microblading done and it not looking the way you want because that would be that would be really sad. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it for brows. I'm going to list the products that I mentioned down below. All these products that I mentioned, I like and would recommend. There are others as well that I also recommend that I don't have here because I'd be mentioning 50,000 products, but I will put them down below because I think good brow products are a little bit more difficult to come by than let's say a good liquid lipstick or a good eyeshadow. But that being said, everybody has different tastes. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and I will see you on the next video because I am, I've, I've been a machine. I've been surprising myself. I've been doing so many videos and filming so much and editing so much and changing every time I film the lighting's a little bit different the sound is a little bit different because I've been trying to perfect the craft if you guys have any suggestions or any requests let me know down below bye